Coach Patsos, man, how are you today, sir? I'm good. I'm sorry. I was waiting for you guys. I thought you were going to call me. Oh, uh, well, our producer was too busy crying about his desk. So it's a maybe bad that's, desk, Jimmy. That's maybe that's what happens. We apologize, Coach. What was he crying about? They switched. He used to have this nice desk in, in like Gaz's office, and he came right? in one day, and like all of a sudden, he went from a nice desk to like a coffee table. <laughs> so now he's crying. Well, I know that sometimes I got a funny story about the desk when I'm in studio one time. Kevin Blank was on the verge of not making it at Under Armour. He said one day he just went in and said, we're all getting new desks and new cabinets. We're going to get organized. There was only six people in the company. And they had like two grand in the bank. And he bought, spent it all on desks. And from that point on, they just took off. So maybe the new desk will help. Well, there you go, Woods. Yeah, maybe, maybe you should take a hint that your desk isn't comfortable so you go do your work. There you go. Are we on the air or no? <laughs> yeah, we're on the air. Yeah, we're on the air. <laughs> I'm sorry. No, no, it's, a good, it's a good story. No, we're on the air. We're swearing. Well, you're fine. No, you, no, it's a good story, Coach. We, we uh, we're glad you called. I know it's been a it's been a little bit of a, a hectic week or so since the last time we talked to you. What is what is different about your team now that that Nico and you have parted ways? You know what? It's CD and I saw him on Sunday. Checked in on him. A uh, quick little breakfast just to talk about his future, where he's going to land, and et cetera. Being patient, but. New team, new kids. No, we just lost one of our family members, but, you know, they're all willing to step up. They look at it as an opportunity, but I can't lie. Is there a better example than Foles and Case Keenum? We put them on the board. These guys are playing this weekend. In other words, going into the weekend, we talked about Case Keenum and, and Nick Foles. Like, you have to be ready and step up, and you have to take over. And it doesn't mean the team's bad, and we can still win games. And Look, we beat Canisius in first-place team. And we lost a tough one at Iona where we, I thought we could have won the game. And at Manhattan, I was really upset about the end of the score just in terms of our fans. I want to win every game, but that we were down two points with three minutes to go, and, and Tom Herter played tremendous defense on a guy. A guy made, like, a really tough shot. So, like, we've got three solid outings. Guys are trying to rally the troops. Our young guys are playing better than ever. We had a little flu bug on our team, and that's not an excuse either because everybody has it. And nobody gave up. We're doing great. We need everybody to come out Thursday. We play Maris, doubleheader. Allie's team's playing at five. Come down. Times Union's all cleaned up. We got the third, I think we're the third or fourth youngest team in the country. Kentucky and Duke are one and two. I think Robert Morris is three, and we're like four. Mike Demos gives me more stats than I can handle. <laughs> so now, now with our team right now, we're the fourth youngest team in the country, and we're in every game. We just got to win a couple, get on a roll, and everything's going to be all right. But our practice was great. Um, the morale's great. We had a great trip to New York. I mean, that's three days in New York. We played Iona, the team took first, came and lost by a couple. We played Manhattan. I mean, I'm telling you, down two with two minutes to go. Then we missed, and they made a big shot, and they picked second. So we're right there, and everybody's fine. Yeah, especially in that Iona game with so much happening leading up to that week with Nico moving on, then you have the quick turnaround on Thursday. Well, how would you describe that game and your team's effort? Proud, surprised? No. A little of both, but I mean, I'm very proud of the way they played. I mean, I was very proud of the way they played. I mean, in other words, we were winning that game with six minutes to go. We're up nine, and the guy misses a wide. We, we miss a three. We're up nine. They come down. Now, we didn't box out on the free throw. I'm not happy about that. Those are things that teams don't do. So, next thing I know, they, they get a free throw rebound at six. We had, a, we, had, then we had a couple turnovers, though. And then it was a tight game, okay? Now you're going to be in a dogfight because Iona's really talented, but we're right there. Like, we're out playing them for 35 minutes. Now, they all played us for five, and that's what they pay you for is the last five minutes. We did really good. Really proud of our team, but guys just played well. Evan had great energy. Prince was good. Jordan Horn was fantastic. Now, Manhattan, Roman Penn just guts it out. The team gives us great support off the bench, and... You know, I just thought different guys stepped up. That was a really tough defensive grinded out game. That being said, we, we battled, and now we have Maris coming. Maris has won a few games, and they've they got this kid funk that made threes, and they beat us last time. So hopefully we're motivated to beat them at home on Thursday night. We really need our fans to come out. Coach Jimmy Patso's with us right now on 104.5 The Team. Hey, Coach, we got, there's, a lot of, um, there's a lot of people who – like freak out about this team, every loss and that this, that, and the other thing. I, I look at the way you guys battled back last year and the way you guys did in the tournament. And I just, I think to myself, as long as, as long as you keep getting better and you are a top five in the tournament, you're going to be just fine. Right. 
Oh, yeah, look, I don't say three games in March. I don't like that term because every game matters. We need people to come out against Marist, and we got to go to Quinnipiac and try to get them back, and then we got to have everybody here. But we have a lot of games to play and a lot of basketball to play, but the team that will go to the NCAA is the team that wins the MAC tournament. And with what we have going on right now, I like us. Okay, are we, are we going to be the favorite? No, I don't know where we're going to land. Did we miss an opportunity at Marist? and play Quinnipiac at home to get a little jump in the league, we did. That's on me as a coach. I don't want to put it on the players. We played really well, but going into Christmas. Then we came out, we had some issues, some guys had some issues. No, we just didn't play well. Okay, now Nico had some family issues, and he had to deal with some stuff. Okay, he's gone. But we just didn't play well coming out of Christmas break. And I thought we were going to play really well. Sometimes you judge a team wrong. That being said, everything's fine. We're playing our best basketball right now. We just didn't get, we're not getting the results that everybody wants. I get it, but we're playing really hard. We're playing unselfish. We have a great team mojo. I'm there every day. You can ask single A's because he comes to practice almost every day. Now we get school starting again. We had a great academic semester. We just had four guys graduate. We just went to the finals last year. Sometimes people have to take a deep breath, you take inventory. I'm not Kentucky. I can't go out and get six recruits, no matter what the people on the message boards wanted me to do. I have a private plane and uh, six recruits that want to come play at Siena that are going to leave here in one semester and go to the NBA. Sorry, folks, that ain't happening. We're going to build it the right way with quality people and quality kids. And it was a four-year build with two 20-win seasons and a, a performance in the finals and a CBI champions. Well, this is a new group. And I'm telling you, Roman Penn and Jordan Horn are not only great players, they're great people. Prince Siduro's got a chance to be the best big man in the league. Other than Fisher's just doing an unbelievable leading, you know, leading our team emotionally and doing everything he can. And then you got different guys stepping up, and then Kadeem's playing really hard. And now, now we got Sammy's come around, and Khalil wants to play. Sammy had a bad three weeks. He was really upset. He came and saw me. I can do better. Because I, why, Sammy? Because Tom Hooter came and saw you, and he said he could do better, and he did. I'd like a chance. Great. That's called team building. That's called young kids getting older. But I don't read the message boards, but I don't worry about this is not this is this is two thousand seventeen. We're a great academic institution. We take four year high school players. We don't take JUCOs, we don't take grad kids, and we're not gonna take shortcuts. But this young team deserves support. Come watch how hard they play. I had an NBA scout, I had a major league baseball scout, I had George King from the New York Post, all go to the Iona Manhattan games. You know what they all said? Wow, your team's really good. They play really hard. They're young. What a bright future. So it's okay to say the future is bright. I like it. I like that comparison you bring there to the Tom Herter and Sammy Friday conversation. And Herter's done well here in 2018. Could Sammy Friday maybe work his way into the lineup and do something like Herter? That's, well, that's what I hope. In other words, he came and said, when Evan went out, I wish I had played, but I didn't practice well. And maybe I was pouting and sulking. I said, stop right there. You're already okay. Sammy, give me a big hug. You're going to be fine. Once you admit you can play better and that you want to help us, we're all on board. Because there's now a lot of minutes open, you know, and Shivers has the flu, and he didn't play well against Manhattan, and he's... So, in other words, there's minutes available. Kadeem's already taken him. Is everything perfect? No. Do I not want to be 5-14 and 14 or 1-5? and five? I get it. But we're getting better. Watch out for us. And then by the time February rolls around, but come to the games at the time, Union Center. This young team, we're the fourth or fifth youngest team in the country. Now, Kentucky's number one, and Duke's number two. Robert Morris, who he beats, number three. I think Holy Cross, who he beats number four, and we're number five of the youngest teams in the country. Well, I'm not going to get all Americans to come here to Siena to turn things around in one day. So we're building the right way. We had a little hiccup with, with somebody on our team. We still support them. We, and Shivers got hurt in Montreal. That doesn't matter. But Prince is getting better. Guys are getting better. But we lost four seniors. And we're not the only team in the country. There's 25 teams with young kids and we're but we're battling we're close we're not getting hey, we got blown out early we screwed up early i screwed up blame the coach don't blame the players but what we're doing lately is battling hard and playing hard you know we need a few wins but stay the course come out thursday night it's a fun brunch, bunch to watch and they're going to only get better and this is the future of our program so we're staying with them Thursday night, hosting uh, Marist at the Times Union Center. Don't miss out. TU Center looks beautiful. Team's playing hard. Coach working hard. And, uh, Coach, sorry about the confusion with the phone call. I, I'm, I'm no, glad you're able fine. to call I us. didn't know if I was going to call, then you were going to call, then I got to recruit. See, I'm, I'm recruiting harder than ever because I understand we have some spots open for next year that we need filled. Got to get quality players in here. But, like, 
we're working really hard, but the kids are working hard and they're doing really good in school and they're really good kids, these this group. So that's what Siena basketball is all about. I got a great letter from Fred Shear and I gave it to the players. It motivated them before I owned it. That's why I thought we were gonna win. And he's a former player, but how special it is to be a Siena basketball player. We know that. But we're not gonna take shortcuts and stay with these young kids, man. They're fun to watch too. Coach, thanks for the time, and I know you're busy. And uh, as far as the recruiting I'll get in call, there next week I'll get in there and we can make my Super Bowl prediction, which Ooh. will be the Vikings over the Patriots. Bye, <laughs> bye, Coach. There Coach, he goes. Coach Jimmy <laughs> Patsos, uh, right there. And uh, we got your top five and five coming up next.